Hey everybody, uh, Pastor Sam and Pastor Jason here with another service review, looking back at uh, uh, what Pastor Ron preached this past Sunday. I wanted to start our time just briefly rereading the text, and uh, I want you to listen for who is doing what in uh, this text, who's doing the acting, who's doing uh, um, the responding, and uh, we'll go from there. So Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 14 through 20. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has cleared away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall never again fear evil. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion. Let not your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. I will gather those of you who mourn for the festival so that you will no longer suffer reproach. Behold, at that time I will deal with all your oppressors, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time I will bring you in, at the time when I gather you together, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes says the Lord. And I think it's pretty neat walking through that text, uh, just how often it refers to our response in God's work. So I want to re restate several of those things. So the people are called to sing, to shout, to rejoice and exult because the Lord has taken away. He has cleared away enemies. The Lord is in the midst. They are to not fear evil. That day it will be said, fear not. So again, no fear of evil. Instead, don't let your hands grow weak because God is in the midst. God will save. God will rejoice over with gladness. God will quiet you with his love. God will exult over you. God says, I will gather. I will deal with your oppressors. I will save the lame. I will change their shame into praise. I will bring you in. I gather you together. I will make you renowned in praise. I restore your fortunes before your eyes. There's such a emphasis on what God will, God will, God will. And there's even some times in there where they're to be celebrating what God has done. And that was for people living uh, before the first coming of Christ. Um, as they were dealing with pagan oppressors, with the idolatry and their, their judgments for their idolatry. Um, you know, Sam, what are some ways in which you, you see the near fulfillment or the fulfillment in the first coming of Christ in that text? Yeah, um, I find it hard to not think about uh, the incarnation with this text. I think that's intended uh, by the Spirit of God. Um, the one phrase from a little town of Bethlehem I've been thinking about a lot this Christmas season has been at the end of the first verse uh, where Phillips Brooks says, the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight, where he's speaking firstly of Bethlehem, but mostly of Christ, of the incarnate Christ. And when I, I look at these things that God says he will do um, about bringing Israel um, out of their spiritual darkness, out of their spiritual bondage, um, through the one who is the King of Israel, the Lord who will be in their midst. I find it hard to not think of Christ um, about uh, how he will rejoice over us, uh, the way in which Hebrews describes he's singing over us presently as our high priest, um, the ways in which he's gathered us together to rejoice um, before the throne, the ways in which uh, he has dealt uh, mightily with our greatest oppressor, which is sin and death at the cross, the ways in which he came to seek and save the lost and healed the lame and gathered the outcast in his earthly ministry, and how he took on the shame for us to remove the shame from us. And so we can look and say, I will change their shame into praise. Isn't that true of any of us who have understood the gospel rightly? Um, and Lastly, how Christ uh, describes what the church will be um, as his witness uh, to the lost and dying world that on the day of judgment, um, they will see their good deeds and uh, praise uh, God for that. 
even if they're receiving uh, the just judgment for their sins outside of Christ. Um, and so I look at all these ways in which God says, I'm going to do these things. I'm going to do these things. And all I'm thinking of, he really meant all those in Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, we see the the meeting of those things in Christ and, and the, the renown in the earth and among all the peoples of the earth um, with the, the mission of the gospel going out to all the nations now. Uh, but also looking forward to the the permanent deletion of shame and outcasts of being those that are lame of reproach um, in the second advent of Christ, the, the the final and full fulfillment of the prophecy of this text, um, which is something we can still have peace about. You know, it's much easier for us to have peace in our situation than than them and Zephaniah because we yeah. can. <laughs> one, we're we're not fighting oppressors oppressors yeah. in our country. Thank God for that. But two, um, we have the first advent. We can already look back to with great hope. Um, and we have the second advent that we're looking forward to with the final fulfillment. And even this Sunday, uh, we're going to actually bridge into Isaiah. We're going to talk about being captivated. Um, by the joy that we can have in the Lord, as opposed to being captives in the world that we live. Um, And it's so many things that want to make us captives, but we're called to be captivated instead by joy. As we in faith look back to the first advent and in faith look forward to the second advent, when God will not only rejoice over us with singing, but where we will be uh, singing and shouting and rejoicing with perfect voices and with me yeah. being able to sing on beat and, and or sing, sing in tune and clap on beat even yeah. at the same time. Um, so that makes me think of something that was an interesting thought to me just to think about. It was uh, John Piper was talking about, I wonder what kind of voice Jesus had because uh, they were talking about how often it's mentioned that they sang a hymn together with the apos- uh, apostles, the disciples um, at that time. And he was just like, um, Trying to get at the heart of the matter is uh, it was um, immaterial what his voice sounded like. It was uh, very material, the content of his right praise before God um, and his heart to worship with whatever uh, they were using at that time, you know. Uh, But um, yeah, I I am excited to continue through the Christmas season this year. just further dwelling in some of the implications of the incarnation. And uh, I'm thankful to Pastor Ron for bringing this text uh, to our hearts and minds um, again this uh, year. Um, I think the uh, the last thing I'll say uh, about the, the Advent theme that we were dealing with that week was specifically peace. Um, though there are many ways in which uh, we can uh, be encouraged by this text, I find it really telling that um, in verse 15, the, the first like primary thrust for our rejoicing is that the Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has cleared away your enemies and the King of Israel, the Lord is in your midst. Um, we often hear the phrase attributed rightly to Christ during the Christmas season as being the Prince of Peace. And uh, firstly, that is the great peace that he brings with God. And uh, I remember a sermon I heard um, back when we lived in, in Raleigh um, from Dr. Marita, Tony Marita, uh, where he came around to the, the truth that your greatest problem has been solved in Christ. So all of your subsequent problems uh, shouldn't bother you in the same way. Uh, you can have peace before God knowing that um, in his great matchless grace to you has already dealt with the greatest problem facing you with sin and death. And I hope that's an encouragement to you this uh, Christmas season as we gather together, um, continuing our Advent celebration uh, through looking ahead how God is really with us um, in Christ and uh, considering those things anew and afresh this Christmas season.